The issue of the civilian nature of the IDP or refugee camp has accompanied humanitarian actions for the last decades. It is a show of maturity of the relation between UNHCR, ICRC and DPKO that we are able to discuss this very complex and difficult issue together. It is important that the civilian and humanitarian character of camps, sites and locations, including urban locations, is maintained where people are displaced. The context of Iraq and the current context in particular, it is critical that the various actors who are responsible for maintaining this play an important role in ensuring that the civilians achieve some security and stability after the traumatic situations that they have been through. We have different mandates and legal framework, but based on our differences, we really want to see how we can complement each other action. Touching base here and touching base uh, in the field really makes a difference. If we have a common understanding and we have the common objective, obviously, we will be able to do our job better. In the Central African Republic, for example, where the presence of fighters in IDP camps has been identified as a, as a problem in many of the camps, complementary action that was taken that under UNHCR lead, the protection cluster drafted an orientation note uh, to address two interlocutors or the responsible authorities uh, on action to take. Ten of our largest missions are mandated to protect civilians um, using all necessary means, including um, up to uh, the, the use of deadly force. Peacekeeping operations, as I'm sure you know, are very large, um, complex. We have troops from uh, over 100 countries. We have um, substantial civilian components. But one of the most important aspects um, of protection in that regard is making sure we have a clear analysis of what the threats to civilians are uh, in a given country. Um, this can help us as peacekeepers plan our operations and plan um, our, our support as well, um, humanitarians in your protection efforts. Our practitioners in the field have been innovative and have created programs that are context specific uh, to address um, the uh, instability at the community level. The beneficiaries are not only limited to members of armed groups but also community members and that allows us also to work more closely with UN agencies, funds and programs and non-governmental organizations who are our implementing partners in uh, designing these programs. Uh, we work in active conflict settings, we work in very difficult and volatile settings. Unpacking some of the issues have revealed some of the areas where we need to invest much more. One of those areas has been um, early engagement, early dialogue, early identification of risks. I think a second area that we needed to unpack was also being quite honest about the limitations of our own roles and our discomfort, I think, in terms of um, areas of engagement. We have a role to play in contributing to a shared analysis of threats and of possible solutions um, to get us out of these very hard dilemmas. Um, and another area where we can contribute is the maintaining this close, transparent communication with communities impacted themselves, to be able to bring this back up in our dialogue with those who are responsible for solving, for solving these very difficult issues. It's an ongoing discussion uh, between uh, DPKO, ICRC and UNHCR, but something that we're quite determined in uh, tackling very robustly.